In the annals of cinematic history, a peculiar gem from 1970 stands out an offbeat fantasy titled Puff Stuff. What endearing qualities have solidified its status as a timeless emblem of the film industry? Unraveling the tapestry of this production unveils lesser known facts and anecdotes that add depth to its narrative. As we delve into the intricacies of Puff Stuff, it's intriguing to consider the elements that have ensured its enduring appeal. What makes this movie a lasting symbol, not just of its era, but of the industry itself? Perhaps it's the whimsical charm that transcends generations or the innovative blend of live action and puppetry that captured the imagination of audiences. Now, let's lift the veil on some lesser known facets of this cinematic oddity. Did you know about the behind the scenes anecdotes that unfolded during the making of Puff Stuff? The quirks, challenges, and unexpected moments that contribute to the mystique of this film. Delving into these details adds a layer of fascination to the overall viewing experience. But enough about the screen, let's turn the spotlight to you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Puff Stuff? We'd love to hear your stories and reflections in the comments below. Share the nostalgia, the laughter, or even the peculiar moments that have stayed with you over the years. So, whether you're revisiting this cinematic oddity or discovering it for the first time, join the conversation and let us know your thoughts. What enduring qualities resonate with you, and do you have any lesser known facts or anecdotes that fascinate you? Share your memories below and let's celebrate the enduring charm of Puff Stuff. In 1970, the movie Puff Stuff faced a critical storm upon its release, with much of the press branding it as garbage. However, amidst the harsh reviews, one shining element emerged Cass Elliot's performance, and singing drew some praise. Despite the unfavorable overall reception, Elliot's contribution managed to stand out. Interestingly, the movie marked the first collaboration between Norman Gimbel and Charles Fox, who later secured a place in the Songwriter Hall of Fame. Their partnership, initiated by Puff Stuff, endured beyond the film. They went on to craft notable hits such as Killing Me Softly with his song, I Got a Name, and Ready to Take a Chance Again, contributing significantly to the world of TV and film. Amidst the cinematic challenges, an unusual and memorable scene unfolded in the movie. Wichapu, borrowing lines from the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise, took an unexpected turn by roasting a character over an open flame. The scene added a quirky touch, with Wichapu declaring the character as finger licking good and playfully instructing, spin for the colonel. In the end, Puff Stuff may have faced its share of criticisms, but it also harbored noteworthy elements that transcended the initial reception. Cass Elliot's performance shone through the negativity, and the collaboration between Gimbel and Fox laid the foundation for a successful songwriting duo. Sid Croft, envisioning a bewitching boss witch for the 1970 film, reached out to none other than Hollywood legend Betty Davis. In an unexpected turn, Davis was so incensed by the proposal that she abruptly hung up on Croft. The attempt to cast Davis added a curious chapter to the behind-the-scenes tales of the movie. Meanwhile, within the whimsical world of Puff Stuff, Jimmy assumed the guise of Witch Beetle. This choice stemmed from the prevalent association of British accents with the Beatles during that era. The decision added a touch of cultural flair to the film, capitalizing on a popular trend of the time. Additionally, collectors covered a set of blacklight posters from 1970, created by Royal Screencraft, depicting scenes from the film. These rare artifacts, born out of the psychedelic era, remain highly sought after among enthusiasts of Sid and Marty Croft's creations. In retrospect, the attempt to bring Betty Davis on board, the cultural nod to the Beatles, and the enduring allure of blacklight posters all contribute to the colorful tapestry of Puff Stuff, a film that, despite initial criticisms, continues to captivate audiences and collectors alike. Cass Elliot's involvement in the 1970 film stemmed from a neighborly favor to Sid Croft, the man behind the scenes. Living next door, Elliot's contribution to Puff Stuff became a standout amidst the initial critical storm. Notably, Jack Wilde's unique vocal approach in the film, featuring multiple tracks to cover pitchiness, added a distinctive crowd-like quality to his character. Moreover, Charles Fox, the composer, tapped into familiar voices, using the same performers who sang the theme song for Love, American style for background vocals and Puff Stuff. These behind-the-scenes choices brought an extra layer of complexity to the film's audio. 
in the colorful tapestry of puffed stuff, from Cass Elliot's neighborly favor to Jack Wilde's multi-tracked presence, and Charles Fox's use of familiar voices, the film's unique elements persist, captivating audiences and collectors alike. During the Living Island musical number in the film, a brief yet intriguing detail unfolds. As the verse explores the world, an image of Earth and the Van Allen radiation belt surfaces. Notably, this image was used by Universal Pictures as its logo at the time, sans the Universal lettering. It's a subtle nod, considering Universal distributed the film. The inclusion of this iconic logo adds a layer of connection between the cinematic world of puffed stuff and the broader film industry. This connection runs deeper than a mere logo cameo. The film itself emerges from a backdrop of financial strategy. The TV series that inspired the movie, while successful in viewership, posed a financial challenge for the producers. The show was a hit but came with hefty production costs. In an attempt to recoup their investment, the producers ventured into the realm of cinema with the 1970 adaptation of Puff Stuff. This move speaks volumes about the dynamics of the entertainment industry, where success on one screen can lead to strategic decisions on another. Moreover, Puffed Stuff's influence extended beyond its original format. Clips from the film found a place in the opening credits of Croft Superstars, an anthology series featuring reruns of various Sid and Marty Croft TV shows. The inclusion of Puffed Stuff in this lineup reflects its enduring appeal within the Croft universe. This anthology series became a platform for audiences to revisit beloved Croft creations, showcasing the lasting impact of Puffed Stuff on the broader landscape of television. In summary, the 1970 cinematic venture of Puffed Stuff, distributed by Universal, not only carries subtle nods to the film industry through its visuals, but also represents a strategic move by producers to navigate the financial challenges posed by a successful yet costly TV series. The film's continued presence in anthology series credits cements its status as a timeless piece within the Croft collection, leaving an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. As we draw the curtains on this journey through the whimsical realms of a certain enchanting movie, I encourage you to delve into the recesses of your memories. Let your mind wander back to the 1970s, to a time when cinema was a kaleidoscope of color and fantasy. Reflect upon the moments when you first encountered this cinematic gem, the emotions it stirred, and the connections it forged within the tapestry of your own life. In the midst of vibrant characters and fantastical landscapes, perhaps you discovered a piece of yourself that resonated with the magic of that era. Was it the lively tunes, the peculiar inhabitants of this fantastical world, or the sheer escapism that left an indelible mark on your soul? Share those treasured recollections, those fragments of time suspended in the celluloid embrace. Movies, after all, are not merely stories confined to the screen. They are vessels that transport us to places both real and imagined, stirring the echoes of our own experiences. Your memories, your thoughts, are the threads that weave a richer tapestry around the legacy of this cinematic marvel. As we bid adieu to this cinematic sojourn, I extend my gratitude to you, dear reader, viewer, for embarking on this nostalgic adventure. Your reflections breathe life into the cinematic echoes of the past, forging a timeless connection with a piece of art that has transcended generations. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, your memories, and your unique connection with the magic that unfolded on the screen. Until we meet again in the realms of cinematic reverie, remember, the magic lives on in the stories we carry within us, crafted with whimsy and a touch of magic.